Hello, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Pythagorean identity as it relates to the unit circle. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. Now, let me go ahead and draw my circle for you first. Here's my circle. And let me draw my coordinates. Just setting things up for you. Now, we are going to deal with something called the Pythagorean Pythagorean identity. So this is not drawn to scale, obviously. Now, before I do that, I need to talk about how do you find the equation for a circle? Now, this right here is a unit circle, which means that the radius essentially equals one. So R equals one, that's the radius. So all the way across from here to here to here, whenever you touch the line going from base of zero, zero as the, as the center of the, of the coordinates, it's gonna be one unit. That's how that works out here. Now. Another thing you need to understand is, again, I'm, I'm leading up to the Pythagorean identity here, is to find the area of a circle, this is the fall, use the following equation, x squared plus y squared equals one. So the area of the uh, unit circle is gonna be one. And so x squared plus y squared equals one, that's how you, that's the equation for finding the area of a circle. Now again, what's unique in this particular situation is because we're using the unit circle, the area is one. That's what's unique here. Now, here's the thing. Uh, remember in a prior video, we talked about cosine and sine and how cosine gives you the x coordinate on the unit circle coming from the, from the, uh, from the, from the, from the terminal side and the y gives you, or sorry, the sine gives you the y coordinate of the terminal side from, for the unit circle. So in other words, if I want to just draw this, and again, this is still background, we're, we're getting close, just be patient. So this is x, this is y, and x is going to be determined by cosine, and this is going to be determined by sine the y, and all these things are working together. Now, here is where we take the next step. Since we know this equation right here gives us the area of a circle in this particular situation, the unit circle, we can take this knowledge and we can figure out cosine or sine whenever by using the following formula. And you may have seen this in other places. So cosine squared, whatever the value of t is, cosine squared of t plus sine squared of t equals one. So in other words, if I add cosine squared t and sine squared t together, I will get one. And if I don't know sine, and, or if I don't know cosine, I can use what I know to determine what I do not know. And so this right here is called the Pythagorean identity. So we're not worried about spelling here, but Pythagorean, something like this, identity. And I know my handwriting is terrible, trust me, I'm aware of that. And so we use this. We use this to find the angle of the, of the information we do not know have. The angle or you know the rate in radian or in radians, if you will. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull this together with an example. So let me go ahead and make my unit circle here again. All right. And then uh, just draw my line down like this. And then across like so. All right, so here's my unit circle. And let's just say I have like the following coordinates. So I have my coordinates. They go from zero, zero to right here. And this is going to be, let's see here, four over seven. But we don't know the X value, X. Now, here's what we have to do. We don't know the X coordinate in this particular situation. So what we do is we take the knowledge we have with the Y coordinate and we use the Pythagorean identity to try to deal with this particular situation. So in other words, what I want to try to figure out here, if I had to try to draw a picture right here is, I want to you know, find this X value right here. Okay, I want to know this and then I can use it for whatever my purposes are. So it's, it's kind of similar to the Pythagorean you know, theorem for, uh, for solving the area of triangles because we do kind of have a triangle here. However, the purpose is slightly different. In other words, we don't really care so much what this length is right here, although we know what it is four over seven. We don't really care so much what this length is either. We want to know the x, y coordinates, which is kind of the same thing. So this is what we need to do. I'll go ahead and draw this out for you. So 
cosine square, we'll just put t in parentheses this time, plus sine square t equals, I ran out of space here, one. All right, now, we don't know cosine. So what's gonna happen here is that we're just going to have cosine again, squared of t, plus, but we do know sine. So sine is four over seven. So plus four over seven equals one. That's, that, this is what we know. Now, we continue to go through the steps here. Oh, I'm sorry, this needs to be squared. Sorry about that. Squared, like so. Now, here's what happens next. So we still have cosine squared of t equals, now we have 16, oh, plus 16 over 49 equals one. Now, this is what we do next. We have 16 over 49, we have one. To subtract 16 over 49, I have to make sure that both sides have the same uh, denominator. So right now, the one doesn't have a, it's just one over one, if you will, but I have to convert that. So I multiply by 49, because 49 over 49 is the same as one. Now I can subtract my 16. And so I end up with the following. I end up with cosine squared of t equals 33 over 49. And so now, I'm running out of space here, but I'll just move right here if you don't mind. I, I end up square rooting that, so I end up with the following. I end up with cosine t equals, when I square root it, so I'm going to square root this, I end up with a square root of 33 over 7, like so. And now I need to figure out, now it's going to be plus or minus, I forgot to put that in here, so this should be plus or minus, plus or minus. Now I need to figure out which answer do I use. Do I use positive square root of 33 over 7 or do I use negative? To answer that question, you have to think about what quadrant is your information in. So as you probably know, quadrant 1 right here is positive, positive. Quadrant 2 is uh, uh, negative, positive. Quadrant 3 is negative, negative. And quadrant 4 over here is positive, negative. We are in quadrant 2, which means the x values are negative. Therefore, our answer, just to make this stand out, our answer has to be, it, it is the following. It's going to be negative square root of 33 over 7 because we're in quadrant 2 and we're looking for the x value. Now, we can confirm this by putting this in the calculator. So, whoops, if you take a look at the, if you take a look at this calculator right here, I kind of already put the information in there. And so you can see here we got 4 over 7 plus uh, the minus a negative square root of 33 divided by 7 squared. This is all the original information. And when I put all this into the computer, I get positive 1. And that's the beauty of it. So we've confirmed that our answer is correct. So now we know without a shadow of doubt that the x coordinate right here on the unit circle is going to be negative square root of 33 over 7. We've confirmed that. And this is what you can do with the Pythagorean identity when you're trying to find the coordinate of on the uh, on the uh, unit circle um, when you're when you're dealing with that. So let me go ahead and go back and kind of summarize what we did, and then we will kind of conclude this particular video. So in this video, we looked at the Pythagorean identity, which is simply is kind of where you take your knowledge of sine and cosine to find you know, the unknown x coordinate or the unknown y coordinate or whatever you have on your unit circle. To understand what's happening here, first you have to be familiar with how to find the area of a circle, which is x squared plus y squared equals, in this case, one, because the area of a unit circle is one. So the extension of that is that cosine squared of t and sine squared t is gonna equal one as well. This is the Pythagorean identity. Now, and then next, we had a practical example of this where we went through the process. We knew the y value, in other words, we knew the sine of, of the unit circle right here, the, the sine coordinate, if you will, or the sine angle, or whatever you want to call it, but we did not know the x value on this particular unit circle. And so by using the Pythagorean identity, we we're able to go through it, basic algebra, nothing complicated here, and solve and get our answer down at the bottom. The catch that you have to keep in mind is, is that, remember, whenever you're dealing with square roots, you have a potential positive answer and also a negative answer many times, almost always. 
And so to know which answer is correct, you have to consider what coordinate or what, excuse me, what quadrant is your x value or your coordinate value going to be in? And that'll help you to determine if it should be the negative value or the positive value. So I hope this video was useful for you and you were able to understand what we were talking about and discussing here as we try to, to continue our journey in trigonometry and pre-calculus. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Take care.